is greatly to be praised. Amen. Amen. Why don't somebody just tell the Lord hallelujah. Glory, glory. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It is good for us to be here to just come and to worship the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. He is so good. He is worthy to be praised. Amen, amen, amen. Let me just read a scripture and we'll just go on. We'll have a song and we'll just go on into our prayer and everything. We're just thankful for everyone being here. Certainly grateful for those who are on Facebook with us. It's always good to have us to come together in person as well as those who are on Facebook with us. We just praise God. God is such a wonderful God, and he is worthy to be praised. We ought to praise him in the sanctuary. We ought to praise him because of who he is. Praise him because he woke us up this morning, and he's starting us on our way. We ought to just say thank you, Lord. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're gonna, I'm going to read the scripture to you from the 24th uh, number of Psalms, and we will just move from there. Uh, these words are found therein. Amen. The 24th number of Psalms. The earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the sea and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to vanity, nor sown deceitfully. Amen. We just bless his holy, holy name. We're going to uh, have a number and then we'll just go uh, from there. Amen. Well, let's just pray. Let's pray. Amen, amen. We bless God. God, we bless thee, our Heavenly Father. We bless thee for the many, many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We pray that you would strengthen us, build us up where we're torn and prop us on every leaning side. You know our hearts. You know our minds. You know all about us. We thank you for this another day, God. It is a great day, a great day that you have made and we rejoice. We're glad in it. But God, we just pray today that you would strengthen us in our walk, our talk. Teach us how to walk circumspectively, not as fools, but as wise. Redeem of the times, God. That's who you are. You are the one that's able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can even think or ask. We ask you to have thine own way. You are the potter. God, we are the clay. Mold and shape us after thine own will. We just pray, God, for the sick, those that are in hospitals, convalescing homes, other places of confinement, those who have lost loved ones. We pray, God, that you will move mightily. We know you can do it. You are wonderful, God. You are a mighty God. God, we just praise you right now. Have your own way. Have your own way, God, in this place. Use us, Lord, in thy service. Draw us nearer each and every day. We love you, God. We thank you right now. We bless thee indeed. In Jesus' name, we give you glory. We give you praise. Amen, amen. At this time, we're going to hear from our young people, and then we'll move from there. Pray that uh, God's name get the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Kids, y'all line up.
Jeremiah 11, chapter 29. Okay. Oh, verse 11. This is the text of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining exile, exile elders, elders, the The prophets and all the people. Let me do. This is the t- okay. I'm just, I'm just start over. This is the text of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to to the remaining exiled elders. The 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 press. Okay, the priests, the prophets, and all the people had deported from Jerusalem to Babylon. This was after King Jeconiah, the queen mother, the court officials, the officials of Judah and Jerusalem, the the craftsmen, and the metalsmith had left Jerusalem, he sent mm-hmm. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Please close your eyes and bow your head. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for thank you. Thank you for waking me up this morning and getting us to church safely. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. You that you have plans for me. Exceedingly abundantly above what I can even imagine. Plans for good. Plans for good that will give me a future and hope. I praise you and thank you that this is under will for me. God, I know you want to prosper and bless me in every way possible and bless me in every way possible and I desire to fulfill fully put my trust in you and surrender my will for you in Jesus name Amen The scripture uh, she read. Come back. I'm going to read it. Sir? Okay. That's it. She's been running around this morning. And she is struggling. We're going to give you a chance to do it.
Okay, we're reading Psalms 105. One, two, three. Give, give thanks to the Lord, call his name, proclaim his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell about all his wondrous work, honor his holy name. Amen, amen. Amen. Good morning, St. Mark. If you don't mind, just for a second, let's just stand up and sing this congregation song together this morning. And while you're standing, why don't you greet someone with Jesus' joy? Tell them that this is the day that the Lord has made. We still will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on and greet someone. It's good to see you. It's good to be seen, not of you. All that we've been through, we still got joy. Praise him praise him sing with me Jesus blessed Savior hallelujah praise him well you don't feel like it Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the afternoon. Praise him in the evening. Jesus, bless his Savior. Yeah, he's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun. From the rising. want to uh, take a moment we're going to recognize uh, our sick we want to take time and pray and uh, pray for all of those who are ill I had a chance to visit with uh, brother Jones uh, on this Friday and uh, he's looking so much better and uh, we're certainly grateful for him but let's keep him lifted up uh, in our prayers keep him lifted up uh, Mama Katie, uh, she has been uh, kind of in quarantine, 
but we want to just keep her lifted up. We know that uh, God is good. God is good. Sister Sharon uh, Dobbins had some uh, uh, things going on with her breathing, and it's kind of been ongoing. We want to keep her lifted up uh, before the Lord. And we're going to pause for time just remembering uh, our good friend and uh, great worker in this church has been was for over, I don't know how many years, but years, uh, Sister Janice Valley White McCoy. We want to just lift up uh, the family. And I'm going to ask uh, Brother Doug if he'll just lead us uh, in prayer, and he can do it right where he is, uh, that he'll lift up uh, the McCoy family as well as uh, those persons, Brother Jones and Mama Katie and all of those, Sharon uh, Dobbins, been having breathing problems. We just want to lift up people everywhere. These are some tough times. And we have to believe that God is able. He's more than able to bring us through, more than conquer us. And we just want to believe him today. We know that he has brought us, and he keeps us, and he keeps on doing great things for us. So we just want to just believe God today. God is good, isn't he? We just want to kind of just think for a moment uh, before Brother Doug began to pray. I want you to just think for a few minutes. You know best day can end up being the worst day. But in the midst of it all, God knows. He knows all about us. We certainly want to lift up the McCoy family. It was uh, that's Doug and I, we were intending to go visit her right after service today. But uh, that's not going to happen. But we can remember the family. We can lift up the family. We just want to believe God. And those of you who've been around St. Mark for a long time or any length of time, you know what the McCoy family meant to this church. They gave of themselves, they gave of their funds. They were just great people to have as members of any church. And she went on and started ministering in the word. We want to just lift up the entire family. So I'm going to ask that everyone, we'll just bow our heads, those that are on Facebook. Uh, as we know, Sister McCoy was known all over. And so we just want to bow our heads just give praise to Almighty God for his goodness, his loving kindness. Pastor Jones will lead us at this point. Glory, Lord, glory. Lord, there's sick among us. Glory. But we thank God that we know you to be a healer. There's nothing, absolutely nothing, too hard for you to do. We pray right now, God, that you give breathing or make breathing easy Lord to Jesus. Sister Dobbins as she is at home today. But we know that you're everywhere, God. Everywhere. So we ask you right now in the name of Jesus, God, to let your omnipresence Holy Ghost visit her and give her sweet relief. Brother Jones, God. Yes. Yes. Calls his name. You have blessed him over and over and over and over, over again. And over again. So we ask you, God, just to do it again. For we understand, God, again, there's nothing too hard for you. Mm. And God, there are even those that are here today in the pews this morning that Lord are definitely Jesus. standing in the need Lord Jesus. of a blessing. We got dressed up. We pressed our way. 
many may not have felt like it due to the heaviness of our hearts but we're here now God so we ask you Lord before we pray for anybody else God help us help us Lord help us help us God because we have all shown up at the same sin hospital this morning to be relieved from infirmities of issues and problems that we've been carrying but God at the end of the day we believe that there's still healing in your hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We still understand that you have deliverance that can be sent down immediately. And we won't wait till the battle is over. We receive and shout now because we claim the victory claim in your the name. Victory, God. The victory. Rod McCoy, Quentin McCoy. Oh, yes. yes. William McCoy. Spouses grandchildren oh, glory, and others glory. and many of us here today are suffering from broken hearts but we know you to be a potter you are the and you are the mender of broken hearts but you have given us an opportunity to prove that what we have on the inside is real for we vow to praise you through the good and the bad mm. we still vow to praise you whether happy or sad happy or sad we vow to praise you in all that we go through. So God, today we ask you, just let praise still come through. We thank you for the life legacy that Sister Janice McCoy left for us all. Oh, glory, glory. I sit here today playing a piano because she taught me. But God, she has blessed so many, she was not stingy with her blessings. Lord Jesus. She had her hand open so she could get something out of it. And you could put something back into it. And we thank you, God, for the many blessings and the many times that she's served and the many years that she served. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. For the students that she taught, for the lives that she has impacted. God, we surely do thank you for Dr. McCoy. We thank you what she's done for this church. We thank you what she's done for other churches. Yes, yes, yes. We thank you for what she's done for this community. We thank you, Lord, for you have plucked out a good one, God. And her, the void will be left here because can't nobody do it like Dr. McCoy. My, 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 my. So we pray, God, for those that are, that is here that, that we continue to work in the spirit of excellence. She wasn't allergic to hard work. She gave it all she had. So we pray right now in the name of Jesus for Thank all that have you. come in contact with us. Thank you. Thank Let you. us give it all we have. Let us lay it all out. Let us thank you for what you've done and what you're doing. And at the end of the day, God, we're going to give you all the credit because all the credit belongs to you. We can't make it without you. We can't we glory, don't even glory. try to make it without you. But for the next days of, of before us, God, we ask you right now, let us be strong in you that we may be able to represent that we are not phony Christians, that we just don't praise you when things are good, but we praise you when things are tough. Glory, that we glory. praise you when we're going through life's yes, trials yeah, and yeah, tribulations. Yeah. When you, we Jesus. praise you when we're sick. We praise you when we're not financially stable. We praise you when our family is going through. We praise you when our country is going through. God, we want to let you know that if you don't do yeah, another yeah, thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. that you have already done enough, and that's just enough to praise you for. So let your character stand up in us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance, deliverance, deliverance. in the name of Jesus. There is joy in the name of Jesus. And this joy that we have, this world, these United States did not give it to us. And God, we will not let any situation take it away. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's children say together, amen. 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 And now let's seal it with a praise. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory.
Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Let me say again one more time. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah. We need you today. Hallelujah, amen. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Glory, glory. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, bless his name. Hey, glory, glory. Bless his name. Glory, glory. So we will prepare for our offering. Ask those who will come to take our offering. Good morning. Announcement. <clears throat> Greater St. Paul Baptist Church will be having their The Greater St. Paul Baptist Church will be holding their annual Ethel May Watkins Family and Friends Day uh, on today at 3 p.m. Greater St. Paul, 
annual Ethel Mae Watkins Family and Friends Day on today. Union Missionary Baptist Church, greetings pastor and members. Um, we pray this letter finds you and your congregation enjoying the blessings of the Lord. We would like to extend a very special invitation to be our guest at our three-day experience as we unite in one accord. Beginning Friday, September 20th through 20, the 22nd, and continuing our battle of survival <clears throat> with I'm a Survivor Women's Conference, Knockout and Overcoming Life's Challenges, Fighting Against Spiritual Wickedness in High Places, Ephesians 6, 12. The knockout topic and speakers are Knockout Healthy Living, Empowering Your Lifestyle, doc Dr. Alyssa Peters. Knockout Insecurities, Unlocking Your True Potential, Know Your Worth, Sister Minnie Lennox. Knockout Work-Life Balance, Insight on Juggling Faith, Family, Ministry, and Career, min Minimizing Life's Distractions and Staying Focused. Uh, UMBC Assistant Pastor Teresa McCraney. Uh, knockout Mental Health, Dr. DeAndrea Kerrigan. Our main event speaker will be First Lady Rhonda Johnson of Oak Grove Missionary Baptist Church in Memphis, Tennessee. We will have our guest psalmist and company, Sister Robin Whitner, formerly Easterwood, and Sister Kim Anderson will be our testimonial witness, witnesses. The registration fee will be $40 for the early bird time of July 21st through September 3rd and thereafter $50. For our first ladies, if you have a group of six ladies or more, your registration is free. Please contact Bernstein Kilgore or Cheryl Denise Allen uh, for more information. Fighting for the good cause, Marlisa Smith, Lady Marlisa, Marlisa Scott, I'm sorry, Marlisa Scott, Lady Marlisa Scott Conference Coach. I'm sorry, Sister Tamika Kelly Green will be the speaker today at Greater St. Paul. Those are our announcements. Amen, amen. Bless the Lord. The Bible says, bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Amen. Let us pray one for the other. We all need uh, to pray. Amen. And pray for me. Pray for me. My old uh, get alone hadn't been wanting to get alone. I hadn't been wanting to get on. So uh, pray my strength in the Lord. I'm going to. Uh, my doctor told me if those pills wasn't working, come back to see him. I'm going back to see him probably before we open up good. Amen. 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 Y'all pray for me. Pray with me. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. I want to share with you today from the 11th chapter of uh, St. Luke. The 11th chapter of the gospel as recorded by St. Luke. Uh, my intention is not to hold you long, uh, but I do want to share a word with you uh, here today. Amen. We're going to begin at the uh, first, first verse of the 11th chapter. It's just so good to see all of you our young people. Y'all just make me feel so good. I tell you the truth. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Thank everyone for being here being present uh, here today. You can't be God given no matter how hard we try. Amen. All right, well, let me share with you a few verses here. I think verses that we're all familiar with. 
uh, beginning with verse 1 in the 11th chapter of St. Luke. Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when he sees that one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. So he said to them, when you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us and do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from evil the evil one you may be seated amen 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 bless God almighty I just want to talk to us for a few minutes it's a very familiar uh, passage of scripture that all of us are well familiar with and throughout uh, our tenure uh, in church I think all of us can agree that uh, we have identified uh, this particular text as the Lord's prayer amen we've identified it as the Lord's prayer but technically and theologically it's really the disciples prayer and uh, the reason I say that you will remember that it was the disciples who came to Jesus and asked him Lord teach us to pray as John taught his disciples and Jesus told them said when you pray say so he gave them a prayer to say amen and you know my brothers and sisters when we look uh, today all of us we need to find ourselves bowing before God bowing on our knees and calling on the name of the Lord whether it's a prayer of asking for forgiveness whether it's a prayer of thanksgiving whether it's a prayer of uh, in uh, our uh, trying to uh, pray on behalf of others, uh, we need to pray. I thank God, all of us, I think most of us today, uh, that we can say that really our first connection with prayer was probably by way of our mother or our father. That's probably where we really learn to pray. Many of us, we've been around long enough, <clears throat> and we remember uh, the prayer. We remember it. Uh, actually, we can quote it without even really thinking about it because our parents taught us before we went to bed at night, or before we closed our eyes to go to sleep, a prayer that says, Now I lay me down to sleep I pray the Lord my soul to keep if I should die before I wake I pray the Lord my soul to take look sister Sharon Hopper back there she knew it she was going right along with it amen so our parents taught us to pray taught us to pray and taught us how to pray and it's one thing uh, to to pray but it's another thing to know how to pray amen so the disciples had uh, apparently been watching John the Baptist and his disciples you do know that John the Baptist had disciples and the truth of the matter is as we go through life we find out that not only did Jesus Christ have disciples and John the Baptist had disciples they are those who have disciples right now because the disciple really is a person who is a follower 
of an individual. And so we have people who are followers of Christ. We have people who are followers in the church. And so they are disciples. And the disciple, the word actually means learner, learner. We are learning from one another. We are learning together. And so the disciples of Jesus was following him. But they not only paid attention to Jesus, they had paid attention to John the Baptist. And they recognized that John the Baptist was doing something with his disciples that was catchy. And they found out John was teaching his disciples to pray. He was teaching them how to pray. But most of all, he was teaching them to pray. And when he taught them to pray, the Bible tells us that, uh, uh, or indicates to us, that something came forth or came about by way of their prayer. They learned to pray. And we too must learn to pray. And we must pray with expectation. We must pray believing God and expecting something to happen uh, when we pray. Uh, you know, we sang a song in church. We've sang it here, and uh, we've heard it throughout our journey. Uh, somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took out the time, and prayed for me. We go on down the line. My mother prayed for me, had me on her mind, and took out the time and prayed for me. My father prayed for me. My uh, pastor prayed for me. My teacher prayed prayed for me. Thank God we are people who realize that prayer is extremely important and that it is important for us to have somebody who will pray for us. And so our parents taught us to pray. My mother uh, taught me to pray. I suppose uh, as I look back on life, the first person I ever heard pray was my mother because uh, it was just something about mothers who taught their children very early in life to pray. And you know, prayer makes the difference. Prayer does make the difference. And it means something for us uh, to pray. You know, every once in a while, I ask people to pray for me. Pray for me. Uh, yeah, you know, sometimes people, uh, they talk about, you know, when you preach, man, you did a good job, you... Uh, you helped me, you did this, you did that. And sometimes one of the first things we say, Doc, pray for me, pray for me. Why? We're not trying to be big-headed or anything like that. We just want people to pray for us that we will continue to grow. Whatever level we have reached, we are not satisfied with being at just that level, but we want somebody to pray for us that we will continue to go higher in the Lord. Amen, amen. And I'm so glad that there are people who really don't mind praying for you. Amen, amen. Uh, I, you know, I, I think about a Mother Ashley, I, I really do. And, and I'm not just saying her, but I, I appreciate her because uh, one of the things that uh, when we are in conversation, uh, she never leaves my presence without telling me she's praying for me. And I believe that, I believe it. And it's just, it just means something to know that you have somebody that has you on their mind and that they are praying for you. I, I know, I believe that she really does pray for me. I, uh, my daughter, uh, one of my daughters, and I believe my daughters, uh, Demetria is a praying person. She is a prayer. She's a prayer. My wife is a prayer. You know, I've been having a little problem with this uh, sciatic, and uh, sometimes my wife would just reach over and lay a hand on my uh, hip or leg there, and she's praying. She's praying. And, and I have actually uh, experienced, I, I know I mentioned one time last week, I believe it was, uh, she said, Lord, help him. Take this pain away. And it seemed like in just a flash that pain was gone. Now, it, it came back, but it went the way then. And so we have to understand prayer does make the difference. And I, there are people I want.
to pray for me. If you tell me you're praying, I want you to pray, and I will ask you to assist me in prayer. But I learned something in life. There are people who can not only pray for you, there are people who will pray on you. And so there are some people, I don't want praying on me. I want them to pray for me. Amen, amen, amen. And then, you know, it's, it just means something when people have a connection with God. Well, the disciples, they looked at uh, John the Baptist, and John the Baptist was teaching his disciples to pray, and apparently things began to happen when John's disciples, they were praying, and it was because John had taught them how to pray. And uh, I tell you, my brothers and sisters, we need to know how to pray. Thank you, uh, young people. You all come up, and you read in scriptures, and you pray, and I'm telling you, you, you will one day understand. By and by, you will know that those things does pay off. It, it just pays off to know that you can pray and really have a conversation uh, with the Lord. I was sharing this morning, and uh, I told the church at Macedonia out at Mountain Pine, I told them on Thursdays, uh, you know, we have ministers' uh, prayer group. And we meet at different churches throughout uh, the city. And uh, there were those who, who they love to be in the prayer group uh, Rev, with Reverend Brown. They, they believe Brown, when he prayed, they believe he was sincere. They believe he was serious. And he was a serious prayer. His wife is a serious prayer. She believes in the power of prayer. There's another preacher not far from here, right across, over from here, white minister. He's a pastor of the uh, uh, church right across uh, from, well, right behind Tim, actually, uh, shop, uh, Brother Bates, the Pentecostal church. He is a praying man. I mean, he can pray, and you actually feel the anointing flowing from him. That's the way we ought to be. We ought to ask God to teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. Teach us how to believe God. Teach us how to know that God is real. Amen. I appreciate God. I, you know, I remember back when I was uh, quite a young man, and we'd be in church, and uh, we would uh, be uh, uh, listening to the old deacons, uh, they would be praying, and they would be humming, and they would be moaning and all that. Uh, but some of them guys, uh, it was just something about uh, the flow of the anointing that was coming from them. You didn't even hardly know what some of them were saying, but you felt like they had a connection with God. So just some of them, they prayed, and they sang those old hymns. A lot of time, even in the hymns, we didn't know what they were saying. But we felt that there was a connection that came from God. And, uh, boy, I tell you, we, we uh, remember some of the old hymns they would sing. And they would be singing those old hymns. Sometimes we didn't even understand what they were saying, singing those hymns. But, boy, we knew when they sang those old hymns, it was a way of them connecting and, and getting in touch with God Almighty. So Jesus Disciples came to him and said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. Uh, you know, right now, I do believe, Sister Ashley, I believe right now, uh, many of the things that I've gone through in life and in uh, successes that I've had, I believe it is because of my mother's prayer. My mother prayed for me. She prayed for all of us. There were times uh, she didn't even know we was listening, but we could hear her in the room praying. And I'm telling you, one of the best things, mothers, fathers, the best thing you can do is pray for your children and your children hear you praying. And you call in their name and let, let God know that I love my child and I ask you God 
Please, sir, uh, deliver them, strengthen them, because there are times parents, they, you, listen, they don't have to be out in the street with you. They don't have to be out here. They don't have to know this, know that. But there is something about the Spirit of God connects family together that God will tell the mother, tell the father, you need to pray. You need to pray. We don't even know what we're praying for. We're just praying because we believe in God. You know, God is so good. He's so wonderful. He's so great. And, and we've got to believe in the power of prayer. I believe. I believe in the power of prayer. You know, uh, I, I just think about, you know, I grew up in church and I was in church and I heard uh, the old mothers, the old uh, saints, they were praying and all of this. But right now, you know, I pray. And uh, uh, I believe God is a prayer hearing God. I, I believe that I can sit on, over on 105 Essex Street. I could be sitting on my couch. I could be sitting in my office in the house. I could be in my bedroom, wherever I'm at. I could be outside sitting on the step. But I serve a God who hears me on 105 Essex. And he moves way over in Japan. I'm telling you, you better believe when you're talking to God, you're not just talking to be talking. You are communicating with somebody who's able to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can even think or ask. Hallelujah. 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 I, I pray for my grandchildren. It, my, my grandson right here, I love him. That boy, that, that boy all right. He, I mean, he all right. You know, so I'd I be praying for him sometimes. I'd be listening to him. I don't say a word. I just, you, you know, sometimes you don't even need to say nothing. Why, why they talking, you just start dropping your head. Just say, Lord, help him, Lord. Help him, Lord. Help him, Jesus. He, he, Lord, help him. He, you know, sometimes you either would say, just Lord, help him, Jesus. You know, Lord, help him. But it, it makes a difference. Amen. It, it, it doesn't mean they bad or anything like that. But sometimes it takes us a minute to get from point A to point B. But with the help of God, we can do it. We can do it. Amen. I remember uh, my dad, I, you know, I, I didn't, you know, I said I heard my mother uh, praying. I heard my dad uh, praying uh, every once in a while. I heard my dad praying actually when I got a little older more than I did uh, when I was younger. Uh, my dad was a person, he was, he was not an uh, educated person, he, he wasn't able to read real well, and, uh, and not only him, but there was quite a few people in church was not able to read well, but they went to church. And uh, every once in a while, someone would ask them, uh, brother, would you read this uh, uh, passage right here? And inevitably, they, they would just start, you know, uh, man, I, you know, I left my glasses at home. They ain't left no glasses. Some of them didn't even wear glasses. But that was their excuse. They, they wanted to keep their integrity. They didn't want people to know they couldn't read, but they could pray. They believed God. They believed God. And I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, it is something to be said for being able to pray. So the disciples came and said, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And Jesus immediately, he doesn't even change words with them. He just says, okay. He says, when you pray, say it. Now, let me tell you something. I know you can pray in your mind. You can. You can pray in your mind. You don't have to speak out loud. I think all of us at some point in time, we do that. But there ain't nothing wrong with speaking. Say, Lord, good morning. Lord, I thank you for watching over me all night long, keeping me while I slept and I slumber. I don't even know what all that means, slept and slumbered. Well, uh, I appreciate it. And then this morning, you woke me up out of my sleep. You started me on my way. 
God, I thank you. We, we ought to always rise up with a, a voice of thanksgiving on our heart, on our lips, on our mind. God, thank you for waking me up early this morning. You know, God is good. God is good. There are times, my brothers and sisters, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we do know he holds tomorrow. One thing about prayer, you got to, if you're going to ask God for something, you're going to ask God to move in mysterious ways, you're going to ask God to do this, do that, you got to believe it. You got to believe it. You got to believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. You got to believe that he is. I had a young man tell me one time, I was working, and uh, he uh, told me, he was one of my students. He said, he said, Miss C, Miss C, they always call me Miss C. Miss C, I don't know if I believe everything you said, but I sure believe you believe it. All I could say was, thank you, brother, because I'd be a poor example trying to preach to you and preach to somebody else, and I didn't believe it myself. And you can believe, if I preach it to you, I believe it. I believe it. Amen. I believe it. And I've seen God do some things on my behalf. I've seen God do some things on behalf of people that I have prayed for. And I'm not just saying it was because of my prayer. I've seen God do some things that I know that nobody could do but God. You got to first recognize he is not just Kathy's father. He's not just Cordalen's father. He's not just Daisy's father. He's our father. Our. And I know where he is. He's in heaven. But I have such a connection with him. I've discovered he's not only in heaven, he's on earth. And I don't know, you may not be able to see him, but he's standing right here, right now. Standing by my side. He leads me, he guides me. Everywhere I go, he's with me. Hallelujah. Lord, teach us to pray. As John taught his disciples, when you pray, say, our Father, who art in heaven. Isn't that amazing? He's an amazing God. He's a powerful God. Where, listen, I know a little bit about where earth is. I know I'm here on earth at the St. Mark Baptist Church. That's what I've been told. That's what the location tells us. I'm here at the St. Mark Missionary Baptist Church. I'm here. But, and he's here. And why do I depend on it? Because uh, the, the lady down, down in uh, St. Clair, Bertsell, you know, Bertsell, they had a, a, they may, some of them may be listening right now, I don't know. But anyway, they, they had a special way of, of saying words sometimes. <laughs> Boy, the, the, the lady, she would be singing that song, she said, he's here and he there. He everywhere. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's here right now. He's there. He's everywhere. God is so good, and, 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 and I tell folks sometimes, you know, he is so good, and you talking about he's here, he's there, he's everywhere. I know he is, because my daddy was born down in Summit, Mississippi, and my mother was born down there in Emmett, Arkansas, and God already had a plan to bring them together in Benton, Arkansas, and for them to connect. Why? Because he had me on his mind. He didn't just have you on his mind. He had, he had seven children. He, he had me on his mind. Yes, he had them on his mind, but he thought about me, and he had the, who he meant to have to be connected, to connect together and bring forth a Donald Crosley and put me here in Hot Springs, Arkansas at the St. Mark Baptist Church. Don't tell me what he can't do. You think about it. 
Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> For real, though. Yeah, yeah, you know. You, you, brother, 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 uh, 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 so I, I, I listened to some of brother, brother Ashley tell them about all out at Compton and all these kind of places and, and then come back around. I found out they, they don't come from down around Camden, Arkansas. But look how God does. He, he just take you all over the world and carry you and bring you back and put you with this one, put you on that one. And then say, that's long enough. I'm going to carry you all over here in Hot Springs, Arkansas. We have to believe that he is. He can. He will. We got to believe it though. God is good. So when you pray, say our father. Yeah. I know our world is in a messed up condition. We're in a bad shape. We, we in some of the worst places right now that we have ever been in our life. But guess what? I don't care if we're white. I don't care if we're black. We can be Mexican, Jews, whoever. He's our father. You don't have to claim me. I don't have to claim you. But it don't change the fact. He's our father who art in heaven. And I don't know how you feel about it, but I believe I'm just going to go ahead and praise his name. Hollywood be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. We are here on earth. He's in heaven. It's all kind of devilish stuff going on here. But then you can look around and there's somebody who been evil, devilish, and Crazy all their life. All of a sudden, they got a brand new attitude. Prayer makes the difference. We used to sing that old song when I was coming up. And that was right down the street. At the St. Thomas Baptist Church. I'm up here now at St. Mark. But down there at St. Thomas, Dr. Thomas was there. Prayer makes me strong when I am weak. <laughs> they say, and keep me marching on. <laughs> Throughout that time, some of the old sisters say, I mean to pray till Jesus comes. And take his servants home. But we, 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 we children, we didn't know what they were talking about, but somebody was shouting, oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And we'd be back there, we'd be laughing, but we'd say, hallelujah. <laughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thou kingdom come. Anybody want to see God's will done? On earth as it is in heaven. Give us. Not just me. Not just yours. Give us this day. Our daily bread. We need him. We need him. Listen. I'm closing. I'm closing. <laughs> yeah I got to close. <laughs> But, but I was, I was about to see Brother Jan Jones a few days ago, and uh, now I'm just, I'm just saying what I'm saying. You, you know, God is so good. One while, uh, you know, they talk about putting him over here, putting him there, and everything, and. Uh, you know, one while he couldn't even couldn't even howl at walk. And so he get up and they try to keep him down because if you get up and do too much walking, they ain't gonna let you go. <laughs> but I'm telling you, God something else, y'all. God something else. This man get up and he start walking 
And he's walking like he's running the relay. I'm talking about God giving you power, anointing to do what folk think you're not able to do or can't do or not supposed to do. I went to see him uh, uh, Friday, and he a little upset with Joe. I ain't told Joe about it. I ain't going to tell Joe about it, but, uh, well, I might tell Joe about it since I done brought it up. He, I don't even know how the conversation come up. He told me Joe was supposed to bring him some tobacco, and he ain't bought it yet. I'm just, I'm just, Lord, I'm sorry. I don't even know if I was supposed to say that, but I. He, he, his, his memory, you, hey, yeah, his, his memory, ain't nothing wrong with his memory. But one thing I know, when you talk about prayer makes a difference, I remember when Brother Jones was up in age and couldn't read. And that, that tells me something right there. Don't, don't, don't play people out because this ain't the way it's supposed to happen. If you pray and believe God, God is able to do great things for us, bring us out, but we got to believe that he is. He'll do it, y'all. He'll do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've been praying for a long time. I had people praying for me. And you know what? I've had people praying on me. But God. God is the only one who knows how, when, and where to do what he wants to do, how he wants to do it, when he wants to do it. Prayer. Hear me when I say we need to pray. We need to believe God. Is there anybody in here believe God? I mean, is there anybody really believe? So my advice to you today is, ask him, Lord, teach us how to pray. When I was coming up, I, I thought, I thought they were teaching me. Because the old deacon, the old preacher, he get down there and a moan. Mm -hmm. Now, Lord, help me, Lord. And it was just something you could feel. Just, just feel it all down on the inside. But then as you begin to grow and to develop, you found out it wasn't a tune, it wasn't a certain sound. It was a simple, it was a simple. Lord, have mercy. Yeah. Have, you, have you ever been in a spot? All you needed was just mercy. Just mercy. Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. I close with this, brothers and sisters. Say, Mark, I'm praying. I'm believing. I know some of us, we, we scared. We scared, y'all. We scared of all this COVID stuff. We scared of this. We scared of that. But I'm praying that somewhere down the line 
And I'm not trying to manipulate anybody. But there's just something to be said for us to come back. I don't care if we just do it one evening, one day, one night. There is just something to be said for us to come back and pray. I mean, believe God. Believe him. Because I'm telling you, God wants to do something in this city, in this church, in your life, in my life. God wants to do something. But we've got to believe him. We've got to trust him. Trust and obey. The writer said, for there is no other way. We've got to believe and trust in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What I want you to do right now, wherever you are, just... You don't have to get up. You don't have to come this up in this area. I want you to just bow your heads right now. I want you to bow your heads right now. That may be something particular, some particular concern that's on your heart, that's on your mind. that you need to give over to God. I submit to you today, if you give it over to him, you'll see God work a miracle. But we gotta trust him. We gotta trust him. If you don't know anything to pray about, let me give you something to pray about. I need us to agree together and ask God to move mightily on the St. Mark Missionary Baptist Church. God would do something mighty that he would give us a heart that we will come back and worship him. Believe him. We can't. We can't just keep waiting to go to a funeral to fill up a house. We need to believe God. <sighs> right now, while every head is bowed in this place, I'm going to ask you to begin to just pray. I want you to pray. I know it may sound silly, but the pew you sitting on, I want you to just claim bodies, living bodies, on your seat that will fill the house and we will come back and trust God as God. I want you to bow your heads right now. Just begin to pray and tell God you know he's able. And not only is he able, he's willing. But are we ready? Please believe him right now. Trust him. Thank you, Jesus. Ask Lord, touch today. Touch today. Touch right now. Bless in this place. Bless in this house. Jesus is mine. As God's covering. He's been my fortress. Over this house. In the fire. Time after time. Even the neighborhood that we live in. We're surrounded by people who are not necessarily godly people, God loving, God fearing people. But God is the God who's able. Right now, ask Him to cover us. 
Keep us looking to the hills from which come all of our help. Teach us how to be men and women after his own heart. I want you to pray right now. Just pray. Because God puts it on your heart. God, touch us right now. Touch us right now. Ask him to touch. Ask him to touch right now. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Glory. Glory to God. And all is Glory to God. I know the offer of tomorrow has God, the disciples came to Jesus and so said, Lord, teach us to pray. And John taught his and disciples. My song, my song. And you taught them, Master. Said, when you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thou kingdom come, thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, God, this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Every person in this place, every pew in this place, we pray, God, that we will see your presence being woke and people coming, joining in, believing in. Trust me, every home, God, that we will see the blessed mercy and your strength be woke in all of our houses. Take care of our children, our parents, our loved ones, our schools, this our nation. Keep us, dear God, look into the hills from which come at all of our help. God, we pray a special prayer right now. For the McCoy family. God, you're able. You're able, God. God, I for one know what it is when mother and father both are gone. But we know you're able. You've shown yourself strong in so many ways. Please say, Mama Katie. Touch her right now. Touch her right now. Sister Sharon Dobbins, touch her, God. Touch her right now. Somebody in this place right now, their hearts are a little heavy. But God, we decree today that you are burden lifted and that you are able to bring us all out more than conquer. We love you, God. We bless you. There's somebody in here. They don't even want anybody to know they're going through whatever it is. But we know you know. Touch, Lord Jesus. Touch right now. Touch in the name of Jesus. Touch in the name of Jesus. I pray whatever illness, whatever affliction may be in our body. Keep lifting up to you. Mother Jackson, God, would you please, son, bless right now. Bless right now, God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you for every good and perfect gift. We pray, God, because we believe you are prayer hearing God, and you're able to do for us right now. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining in with us today. And I'm going to ask you throughout this week, let's just pray.
Pray for the church. Pray for one another. Amen. Pray for the pastor. Amen. Pray for the pastor. Tell, tell, tell the Lord, help him with that old sciatic nerve. I believe, I believe it's feeling better right now than it was when I got up here. I'm believing God. Amen. So let's just pray one for the other. Amen. Stand. Amen. May we stand. God, in the name of Jesus, as we prepare to leave this place, to go down from here, we pray that you would give us what we need. Teach us how to walk in a way that's pleasing to you. Strengthen us, build us up according to your own goodwill and pleasure. Guide us, O God, over thou great Jehovah, as we pilgrim through this barren land. We're weak, God, but thou art mighty. Hold us, I pray, with your powerful hand. Bless all that we're to pray for in the name of Jesus. Thank you, sir. Amen. Amen. God bless. God bless.